I would rather have these trolling motor batteries than having a second unit on my boat. I think that's how important these things are if you're actually a fisherman. All right, you boys seen the title, seen the thumbnail. We're gonna get right to it. Should you upgrade to lithium batteries? The straightforward answer is, of course you should. There is some caveats, but for your trolling motors, I would do it 110%. For your electronics, probably do it 110%. The only reason why I think a guy would run lead acid over lithium is A, they already have the lead acids and they're working fine for them. Or if they're running into problems, it's very rare that they run out of battery. B, they don't really fish a whole lot. They're fishing, when they go fishing, they're only fishing for a few hours. They ain't fishing, you know, all day. C would be if you're one of them guys that you're on your big motor a lot more than your trolling motor, then it would make sense too. If you're because you're you got to know how much your batteries you're running down right now, really. If you're running out of battery now, you probably need to upgrade. If you're not running out of battery, why why would you upgrade? You know, if you want to run your lead acid for your electronics, if you're not running real big electronics, there's also no need to do that, especially if you're running a dedicated already house battery you can get away with it if you use your big motor a lot. If your big motor is charging it all the time, then you really don't run that many issues. But if you're starting to get multiple graphs, you probably should be at least running a dedicated house battery, if not switching over completely to lithium on your electronics. I mean, the price of these things are crazy. I get that. But they have came down a lot. I'm, uh, half, easily half, especially since I've been buying them for the last couple of years. The first lithium I ever bought was for my fish finders. I run four fish finders on my boat, which is ridiculous and stupid, but that's what I do. So my biggest problem to begin with was my electronics. I was, I needed more for my electronics because I don't run my big motor much. I stuck with my lead acids because of the price of the lithiums at the time. Last year was the first time that I ran lithiums on my trolling motor. About 200 amp hour batteries, these SOKs, they worked night and day different. These cost me originally 1,500. They are now $800 for 100 amp hour batteries. So a 24 volt system is costing $800 to your door right now. I don't know why you would not do that if you're in the need of upgrading. I mean, if you just bought lead acids last year, then I get it, run them. Or maybe like me, you got a John boat you can put them in and that'll work better for you. There's all sorts of different options you can do. And you can get really, really cheap. I mean, I think the cheapest ones are probably like 250 bucks now, if not cheaper. I personally wouldn't recommend them, but I get, if your money's tight, it gets you in the game. And oh, honestly, these things are all coming out of China and made out of China. I, the cells are different grades and the way they put the batteries together is different. But at the end of the day, they're probably in a whole lot different. It, I do watch a lot of solar guys videos on batteries and it, it's really just the way they wire them, their temp sensor cutoffs, all that kind of stuff. Like maybe their BMSs are cheaper. They don't have the Bluetooth BMS or the app setups, which is nice, but also not needed. You have to realize with these batteries too, there can be hidden cost and the chargers and everything, wiring, everything else that comes with upgrading. But I get into the chargers and wiring and all that in a different video. Another point you have to realize, and they do, people do say this, is the cost that these batteries will cost you over time. If this battery lasts 10 years at $400 a battery, what more do you want out of it? I mean, if it, all honestly, if this thing lasted six years for $400, you're already ahead of the lead acid in everything. For $800, you can go pick up some Saturdays or even go do a little couple side jobs, clean up someone's yard and pay for these. It's a no brainer. I'm not a professional fisherman, nor am I an expert on batteries, but I do love to fish as much as I can for as long as I can, especially on trips. 
And the only way I can do that is buying lithium batteries. I don't care what brand you buy. I will tell you the ones that I prefer and be as honest as I can to you about it. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm a nobody. Don't care about brand over another brand. I just like the way certain brands function over other brands. But personally, I would stay with a couple brands. And I know there's a lot of brands out there. And each brand has their thing. Dakota Lithium is probably your most popular one. It seems like they're everywhere. You can't go anywhere without seeing them. I think they're good batteries, but for the cost of them compared to a, a couple other brands and the way they're built, I personally wouldn't buy them. But if you want a good battery and with good cells and done right, I believe, inside the battery, Dakota Lithium is pretty good. Not my cup of tea. I would rather go with a battery that's more rebuildable. The SOKs and your Epics are pretty rebuildable. The SOKs are definitely easier to rebuild than the Epics. I don't have an Epics, I never ran them. I only ran SOK in the smaller Dakota. If I was you and knowing what I know now of going through this battery thing for the last few years, I would go and buy an SOK or an Epic battery if you're any kind of hands-on guy and you don't really feel comfortable with the warranties these guys offer, because that's another thing. They say, you know, I'll give you seven years. This brand gives you 11. This brand gives you 10. That's all. Yeah, we can all say that. These things are supposed to easily last 10 years. Easily, especially for us. As long as they're not in the cold or extreme heat. You're probably gonna have problems with the BMSs, if anything, really. Or the cells getting really out of balance which everything in here should take care of that and the chargers you're running and you could also run balancers with these. But again, that's getting too deep for right now. My opinion, warranties, like they say on Tommy Boy, ain't worth shit. But why do they put a guarantee on the box then? Because they know all they sold you was a guaranteed piece of shit. Unless the company backs it up. And if you look at anybody's reviews on any batteries, I don't care, these, these, Battleborns, I don't care. You look at the reviews, a lot of the guys that are leaving negative reviews, they're not saying the batteries are, you know, these are the worst batteries. They're like, we had a problem, which could be you caused the problem or the battery manufacturers caused the problem. But we had a problem and we tried to get in contact with said company and they didn't do nothing for us. They didn't answer us back. They didn't answer us until we put out a bad review on them then they finally came crawling six months later and we already bought new batteries from a, another company. And that is why I wouldn't buy an already sealed, can't basically rebuild battery. Yeah, you can cut this up, pull it out, rebuild, but you're never gonna get it watertight. These you can take off and rebuild these basically. And it really at the end of the day, as long as this case don't break, you can build this whole battery yourself and you'll be fine. Because the problem with building the, these batteries is you get a lot of money wrapped up in whatever kind of case you can get. You can go buy every little part in this thing easily online, easily. Also, people get scared of these batteries because of some so-and-so's garage burned down, fire, blah, blah, blah. And also like, oh, there's a lot of voltage in here. I don't wanna fix them. I'd rather just send them off to get fixed. Yeah, that's, that's fine. You can do that, but that's not how I operate. If I had problems with these batteries, I would try to contact the company. More than likely, I'll probably get a run around because that's how it seems it works in my life with any warranty claim I've ever had on about anything. I'm not gonna jump through a bunch of hoops for the warranty. So me personally, I had a problem, I'd probably fix it myself. And it's not that big a deal. I don't see a guy having really that many problems. It, it seems like if you get a bad battery, it's a bad battery from the get. The BMSs do go to shit here and there. Easy fix in something like this. Very easy fix. Then you can watch a lot of videos on the solar guys tearing these things apart. And any of these batteries really apart. And they'll give you a very good review on each battery. I Personally, if I was you, if you were worried about what brand of batteries and you don't trust what I'm saying, Go watch the solar guys. 
they live and breathe this. I mean, they're battery nerds. They love this shit. They get way more in depth. They know a lot more than us. And that's kind of how I stem from. That's how I got into these batteries. I mean, the solar guys said they're good. They're rebuildable. I love it. I'm not going to go through all the numbers and all that stuff when it comes to the lithium batteries. I don't think any of that really matters. They're basically all the same. The amp hour is the only thing you should worry about, and you shouldn't be buying under 100 amp hour for your trolling motors. I don't care really what size your boat is, unless it's an actual John boat. You should be buying at least 100 amp hours, if not more. 100 amp hour ones will do most of what you want it to do, and then some. What I had a problem with first originally is I switched to these lithiums. I get a lot more out of them. So now we're staying on the water even long. I mean, we're just trying to go all day. I mean, we're, and then we fish, like we'll fish like 12 hours is a short day for us fishing. We will fish 18, 20 hours very easily. And the only thing that will knock us off the water is our batteries. When you start getting into fishing high winds and fishing long periods of time, say in over 12 hours, then you might want to start looking at the 200 amp hour, even maybe even 300 amp hour if you can get them to fit in your boat. That's going to be the problem with the 300. Everybody's boat's different, but if you can fit the 300 amp hour in your boat and you fish it all the time, I would get 300 amp hour. If you can fit the 200 and you like to fish for over 12 hours, I would definitely get the 200. That's where I screwed up. I thought these 100 amp hours would solve all my problems, and honestly, they didn't. And I'm still happy I purchased them because they'd still be in my boat right now if the prices didn't come down. But since the prices came down, like I said, I got them 200 amp hour now, and I'm not gonna run into really no issues. I mean, that, that would be like, if I gotta go two days without charging, I might have issues with the 200 amp hours. So I had 300 amp hour for what I'm doing, probably real overkill. It'd be like you're almost spending the whole two days on the boat. It really bothers me there's not much honesty in these reviews anymore. And it's hard to decide where you're gonna spend your money and that's what I'm trying to help with a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying I'm right, but it's worked for me and I guarantee it'll work for you. But like anything, there is some hiccups along the way and you will run into a bad product. There's no product out there that is perfect 100%. Not possible. There's a lot of other factors that go into actually putting the battery in your boat. And if you want me to go into that, I can make more videos about the chargers, balancers, wiring, all that. I just don't know what you guys actually want or if you're even interested in this kind of stuff. The brands I recommend are pretty good brands and they're pretty good staples in the solar world. And them guys, like I said, they really nerd out about this stuff and that's why. I chose the two that I chose. Granted, I don't have an Epic but I will. I just don't, I like that rebuildable I thing. Uh, I keep saying that I like them so I can rebuild them. And in reality, you probably never have to touch them. I mean, they're gonna last 10, 15 years. I spent a lot of time looking up reviews and stuff of that nature on YouTube. And I have a hard time finding real people doing it. And I'm hoping this video helps a little bit. Might've confused you more. Showing up though, pretty straightforward. Buy these. Buy Epics. Figure out exactly what amp hour you need. Personally, if you can get the 200s, get the 200s. I understand that the money and them fitting in your boat is a big factor, but if you can, get the 200 amp hours. I, you will not be upset. Yeah, I mean, really, you're gonna cry about it for a little bit, and then after that, you'll be happy. Just buy lithium and be done. It shouldn't even be a question anymore. Just upgrade your damn batteries. Come up with the money. Upgrade your batteries. Be done. Don't even think about it anymore. Probably the best thing I ever did in my boat. Actually is the best thing I did in my boat. I mean, I don't know what else I did to my boat that was better than that. It ain't all the electronics, I'll tell you that. <laughs>